Good morning. Hi, my name is Lisa, and I just want to welcome you here to Church for the City, where people are far from God find life in Christ. We also just want to give a special shout out to our online campus. Thank you so much for joining us for worship this morning. If you are new with us today, we would love to connect with you. So please text guest to the number on the screen. All right, let's grab our Bibles and dig into the word this morning. Our scripture is Psalm 5, verses 11 and 12. But let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them sing joyful praises forever. Spread your protection over them, that all who love your name may be filled with joy. For you bless the godly, O Lord. You surround them with your shield of love. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much that we have the opportunity to gather together this morning, Lord, to worship and praise you, God. I pray that you please make a way just to clear our hearts and our minds from any distractions or any hindrances, Lord, that keep us from coming holy before you in adoration. We just pray that this worship is glorifying to you, Lord, and it is a reflection of our love for you, God. We pray all these things in Jesus' beautiful name. Amen. Come on, let's lift our voices to the Lord today. Fix our gaze, fix our face upon him. I'll sing this out.
Come on, lift your voice. All hail the Lord of heaven and earth. All hail Jesus. All hail the Savior of the world. Come on, in this place, let's continue to declare the name of Jesus. Over every situation, anything you came in facing today, the name of Jesus is victorious. The name of Jesus prevails. God, we trust in your sovereignty. We trust in your power. Come on, just continue to give him praise. Continue to give him glory. Jesus, we lift up a banner. We lift up the banner of Jesus this morning. Your name is your name, your name is victory. Oh, praise will rise to Christ our King. Your name, your name is victory. Oh, praise will rise to Christ our King. Every voice, your name.
Amen. Let's celebrate someone that's going public with their faith this morning. Let's turn to the screen. Good morning, everyone. My name is Katie Grace. I had been afraid of death because I did not know where my soul would end up. I was sure it was in the depths of hell. Despite growing up in a Christian environment, my life was entirely sinful. Sex, drugs, addiction, stealing, relationships, you name it, I had it. I felt hopeless. I felt depressed. I had not experienced joy in quite some time. It has been like that for years up until it led me in a mental facility to detox from drugs. There I was transferred to a rehab. While at rehab, we were required to attend meetings. On April 9th of this year, I was attending a meeting and I felt completely desperate. I cried out to God to show me a sign. He was there for me. I went to grab a coffee cup and I saw a mug that on the front of it read, the Lord bless you. I continued to fill my mug up with coffee and then I saw the other side which read, and keep you. I instantly felt a complete peace and felt the presence of God. That's when I knew it. God was real and I gave my life over to him. The mug read lyrics from my favorite song we sing here at CTC. It's called Blessings. Doubt no longer has a hold on me. Addiction no longer has a hold on me. Depression no longer has a hold on me. Anger no longer has a hold on me. God gives us promises, and the only thing standing between you and a relationship with him is yourself. Today, I attend City Life Groups, have an amazing support system, free from drugs, and striving every day to be like our Father. Today, I'm going public with my faith. Katie, Jesus said every disciple should be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And because of your confession of faith, today I baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And according to the scripture, you shall receive the Holy Spirit. Let's celebrate that today. Let's go back to the song of worship. We worship you, Jesus. You're worthy, Lord. We honor you today, Lord. We fix our eyes on you. Thank you, Jesus. Sing Adonai with me.
let's just pursue the presence of God right now. God, we thank you that your Holy Spirit is here among us. God, there's no other place we'd rather be, no other place we desire to be but in your presence, God. Lord Jesus, when we meet you in your presence, we're renewed. God, the confusion disappears and the clarity comes, God. Holy Spirit, we invite you to have your way in our hearts. God, anything we came in with, God, anything heavy that we're carrying, Lord, that we would remember your promise, God, that we would take your yoke upon us. For your yoke is easy and your burden is light. So God, we just magnify the name of Jesus in this place, Lord, over every family represented here today. God, over every job, every business, every, all the finances, Lord. God, any illness or sickness, God, we ask that it would be removed in the name of Jesus. God, we pray for your healing power to take place right now in this moment, God. As we declare and lift up the name of Jesus, may you inhabit the praises of your people today, Lord. May your Holy Spirit rest upon our hearts, God. As we lift up your name, as we glorify the name of Jesus, the name above every name, the name that brings deliverance, the name that has power, that still sets people free, that still breaks shackles and strongholds. God, we declare the name of Jesus in this house. God, you have not decreased in power. God, you have not become dormant. God, you have not left the building. God, you are still active and moving. God, in this house today, in this world today, Lord. So God, above every, every power, over every government, over every ruler, God, we declare the authority and the name of Jesus in this house. Both in the flesh, in the spirit, we declare the name of Jesus today. God, we sing out your praise. Come on, let's lift our voice.
what an amazing opportunity we have to be in the presence of God and just to dwell in the name of Jesus and remember who, where our treasure is. Amen. All right, we're going to take a time to minute to mingle. Uh, go ahead and meet and greet someone around you. If there's someone you've never met before, please uh, go find them, reach out to them, tell them they're, you're thankful they're here today. Right there in your seat. Can we just take a moment and give God some praise for that incredible worship set? I just I had such a moment in God's presence and and even uh, ministering to to a person. Like I needed that reminder and I wanted to remind that person. But I think I want to share with all of us that those moments in God's presence don't stay here. It's great that it's available here, and we love the fact that we, that God has given us the opportunity to create a space and a place for that, but that same presence, that same power leaves with us when we leave this building, and it goes with us to our school, it goes with us to the workplace, it goes with us to our homes, and I'm just so, so grateful to God, and I'm also just so grateful for uh, our worship pastor, I promise he's back there, uh, Philip, for, for just, just an incredible team and incredible worship culture you've built here, man, I'm so, so thankful to serve with you, bro. So, yeah. Also, we want to welcome our online crowd. We love you. We, we're thankful that you've joined us. Uh, so good that, that you're here with us on this, on this end of summer, early fall morning. Our lead pastors are still traveling. Our lead pastor is still traveling today. He is uh, ministering in Walla Walla, Washington. Uh, don't, I'm not sure if there's a time difference, but he's, he's ministering there. One really cool opportunity he had is, is he had the chance to go minister at a camp that's for fathers and sons fathers and sons that are in ministry, which is really cool. And then he stayed through and, and he's preaching the weekend. I was originally going to go with him, but I, I worked this weekend. So some of y'all got that, but anyway, um, yeah, I'm here. So uh, we're praying for them, excited for, to hear about all the ministry that's, that's going on there. We're, we're excited that V, v is there because I'm telling you, when they, those two are together, it's just different. It's just different when they're together because V is a, a powerhouse, as, as we all know. So we're thankful that they get to travel. Thank you also for being a sending church. Thank you for being a church who understands uh, we have powerful worship, uh, we have a great lead pastor, and, and we, we have the opportunity to share them with the world. So we, we, we're grateful that we get to do that. So thank you for being a sending church. That still shows up when the lead pastor is not here. So thank you for, for doing that and being that. Uh, I do want to, speaking of go, I want to talk about the opportunities that we have uh, to serve. And one of those is through our We Love Our City ministry, we have an opportunity once again to go out and on August 19th, we're going to do another gas station blessing. We're going to go out and we're just going to pay for, people, pay for people's gas. If you haven't heard about it before, what we do, uh, the We Love Our City team chooses a gas station and they go with, with, with stacks and stacks of gift cards to pay for people's gas. And you just go up to the gas, gas pump, you spark up a conversation and you end the conversation letting them know 
We love Jesus, we love you. Please let us pay for your gas. We ask for nothing in return. We're not looking uh, for any notoriety, to be honest, but we love Jesus and we love our city, so we would like to put that into action, amen. So if you wanna be a part of that, you have the opportunity to stop by uh, the Connect table on the way out here, or if you're, if you're online, you can hit the digital Connect card. Also, uh, if you want to mark your calendars, uh, for those who don't know, City Youth Ministry meets here every Wednesday night. For We have sixth grade through 18-year-olds. It's just an incredible opportunity. But on August 31st, which is the last Wednesday of the month, we're going to have what we call a one night. And what we're going to be doing is opening up the doors to, to any, any and all ages. Uh, other churches will be joining us. Uh, we have one of our good friends and a, and a great uh, pastor, preacher, and leader by the name of Dustin Woodward, who's going to be preaching for us that night. So if you would like to join us, please do. Uh, we, we'd love to have you. Uh, also, uh, that same day, he's going to be doing some leadership stuff for, for some people in the community. So August 31st here at CTC, I want to talk to you uh, about giving. We, we, we love to give here. We, we, we don't make statements about please. We don't make statements about help. We're, we're just a church that believes in generosity. We, we, we have the opportunity to give. We have the opportunity uh, to give back to God what's already his and to be a blessing to people. And you heard about the gas thing we're doing, but I also want to share uh, about this, this ministry, this opportunity we have called Care Portal. Care Portal is an online program, and it's set up to, to where the people, the workers of DCS, DCS that are, that are working with children in, in, in the system, they're able to go online to that Care Portal and put the needs of some of the families or some of the, the, the young people that are in that position. Things like, uh, this family needs a microwave. This, this, this young person's getting placed, but they don't have a bed. This young person's going to school, but they don't have clothes. And what happens is they put that on Care Portal, and then we as a team, the, 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 the We Love Our City team, gets to go and just start plucking things off that list and say, hey, we, we wanna be the solution. We wanna be a blessing. We wanna be a part of that. And that team actually recently went back into action because as a result of COVID, there was a lot of restrictions when it comes to buying things for people's homes, but they've come back together. And just in the short time they've been back together, uh, they've had the opportunity to be a blessing to 18 different kids, 18 different kids providing needs that, that they didn't know how they were gonna get. And that's a result of your giving. That's a result of you uh, understanding that irrational generosity is something that we get to be an example of. We serve a generous God and we wanna be a, a generous church. So if you want to be a part or if you wanna see more about how that Cure Portal works, you can email, and, and, and I don't know if it's on the screen, but you can email, it's an easy name, Rose. Rose at ctcfamily.com, rose at ctcfamily.com. And you can ask more about Care Portal. If you can't remember that, just stop by the Connect table and they'll connect you uh, with the, the We Love Our City team and Rose when, when it comes to Care Portal. We, speaking of giving, we don't pass the, the offering plates or buckets or anything in a traditional manner, but we do. We, we have collecting boxes at every exit. And you can also give on the ctcfamily.com, the CTC Family app. I wanna pray, I wanna pray for our campus affiliates around the globe for those who may be new or those who may be watching from out of town and don't know much about the history of CTC. Uh, we've been blessed to, with the opportunity to have affiliates in, in South Africa, in India, campuses there, in, in San Luis, Mexico, and, and, and even a group that comes together in San Luis, Arizona. And uh, yes, San Luis, Arizona, there, there she is. Maria, we love you. And we do, even though we have services at different times, when we come together for our Sunday morning service, we want to pray that God continues to use them and do great things uh, in them and with them. And one other thing we like to do at CTC, we always love to pray for another local church. We believe that we don't stand alone in the call of God. We believe that we're not the only good church in town. We're not the only church that is preaching truth and, and leading with grace. And, and today we're gonna be once again praying for another, another local church uh, here in town. We don't talk about it much, but we actually send them a gift every time too. So I'm gonna be praying for them, praying for our pastors and just praying for us to uh, receive the word. So if you'll bow your heads, Lord, we thank you so much for this opportunity. We thank you, Lord, that you are here. We thank you, God, that your presence is already mighty. Your presence is already uh, so strong, so tangible in the room. We ask this, as we move forward, Lord, that you open our, our, our hearts and our minds to you, open our ears to, to hear your word clearly. We thank you, God, for each and everything that we got to celebrate today, all of the wins when it comes to uh, the, the community outreach and, and the generosity. And Lord, we thank you for the campus affiliates all over the globe. But, but more than anything else, Lord, we thank you that you love us and that you care for us, and that Jesus died for us, though we were so undeserving. We ask that you be with our lead pastor as they travel, as they minister. Lord, we pray that you use him in a mighty way. Continue to fill his cup as he pours out to others. Give him great, great uh, rest when he has the opportunity to get it, Lord. Uh, let him uh, really download from you each time he ministers. We thank you for V being by 
his side. Lord, I pray that you even use her in a, in a special and unique way as she ministers alongside him. Lord, we thank you for each and every one of our serve team members, uh, not only just today, but throughout the week that, that give of their time, give of their gifts and talents to be a part of, of, of the kingdom, a part of this body. We pray, Lord, that you continue to bless each and every gathering. Give us your grace. Give us your, your, your favor and your mercy, God. As we get ready to hear the word, Lord, we, we pray that each and every word that the pastor speaks this morning lands on good soil. We thank you, God, that it, in a world full of chaos, we get to sit here in peace and comfort and hear, to hear from you. Lord, let us not take that for granted. We love you, Jesus. We give you all the honor. We give you all the glory and the praise. We lift up specifically Yuma First Assembly of God today as they gather. We thank you for their longevity in the community. We thank you for Pastor Paul and her family. We ask that you continue to use them in that area of, of, of the city. We ask that you uh, continue to be with them in their leadership, be with them in their planning, their direction. God, give them resources. Uh, continue to let them be a, a, just a beacon of hope in that part of the city. We thank you for them. We thank you for every other Bible-believing church here in town. We ask, Lord, we ask, Lord, that we continue to lift them up and remember that we're a part of something much bigger than ourselves. We love you. We honor you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. All right, I have the honor to bring up our speaker today. He is not a guest. He is one of our own. He's been here with CTC for about a year and a half. He has an incredible story of ministry and career and different things. I'm looking forward to hearing from him. Uh, he, it was such a powerfully, powerfully spoken message this morning, and I expect no different. So if you don't mind, will you please stand to your feet as we honor one of our very own, Pastor Augie Clarkson. Be seated. Come on. Ty built me up uh, last service, and I said, uh, and I'll say it again, my favorite verse in the Bible is John 3.30. Anyone know that one? For he must increase and I must decrease. So, man, I really got to decrease myself after I uh, give a standing ovation like that. So, um, like Ty said, my name is Augie. I'm, uh, I'm a CTC member about a year and a half now, and it's my great privilege to come and, and present the word to you today. Um, we, uh, we served at another church here locally in town for about 20 years, and um, so I've partnered with CTC for, for many, many years, and the staff here, um, y'all are blessed. We are blessed with an incredible, an incredible staff here at CTC. Um, each week you hear a powerful word from the communicator, and it might not always be Pastor Tyrone, maybe it's Ty, maybe it's Ralph, maybe it's somebody else, but y'all are blessed so much here, and so it's my great honor to be part um, of the ministry here for just a little bit even. Um, my name is Augie, like I said, I was, uh, I'm, I'm been married for 23 years. I'm married way above my pay grade, fellas. Any of you do that? You marry way up? Yeah, so there's like four of you. Um, the other wives are like, what are you talking about? Like, I'm already starting chaos in here. I know that. Um, and I like to have a little bit of fun and do some things a little bit differently, too. So anyway, I have, I've been married for 23 years. My wife's here. Her name's Lori. She's a hairdresser, so if you need your hair did, let, let me know. Um, and um, I've got a daughter who's going off to NAU next week. Oh, quick clapping, man. I'm not happy with that at all. Um, she's my baby. And um, it was bit, yesterday we had everything laid out in the living room. Like, and I'm like, how are we getting this all there? This is crazy. Any of you do that yet? Send your kids to college? Yeah, man, it's tough. Uh, so, and I also have a son. He's kind of the, you know, forgotten one right now. But anyway, uh, he's at Cibola. He's a senior at Cibola. Any Raiders in the house? Let's clap it up for the Raiders. Come on, yeah, right back there. You know, I told um, Pastor a few weeks ago when we, we went to lunch, I said, I'm going to dig on you about this Yuma Catholic thing. Because that's all we hear about on the stage. And I'm like, there are some other schools in this town. I went to Cibola. I graduated from Cibola in 1993. 
right? My wife graduated. I won't tell you the year because that's rude. She graduated from there. My daughter just graduated from there last year. And prayerfully, fingers crossed, my son will graduate from there this year. So we are a Raider family, okay? A Cibola Raider. I, I also saw Ty up here a couple months ago with the Oakland Raiders or LA Raiders or, or Las Vegas, whatever they are. We're not talking about those Raiders. We're not with Cibola Raiders. There's some other high schools in this town, y'all, okay? There just are. And you got re- to see a reality about that. But anyway, uh, all jokes aside, I'm so happy to be here. Um, it's, it's been about a year and a half since I've been on stage preaching. I've actually done a few funerals, unfortunately, and a few weddings in that time. And so you'll just have to give me a little bit of grace as I get back kind of into the swing of, of getting up on stage and preaching. So hopefully you can do that. Um, let me pray before we start, and then we'll just jump into it. Father, thank you so much for the opportunity. Like I was saying in the, in the back room there, God, I'm so privileged to be able to be used by you today. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Father, I know what, I know what a horrible piece of trash I was and am so grateful that through the gospel you changed me, that you chose me, you adopted me, you changed me. Father, I pray for the message today, not my power, but yours, not my words, but yours, not my glory, but yours alone. I pray, Father, that we hear what we're individually supposed to hear and corporately supposed to hear, and then we go out and we do something with it, not just in one ear and out the other, Father, but in our ears to our hearts and then to our feet to where we'll actually do something with what we learn today. I pray all these things in your name. Amen. Okay. Now, why don't you stand with me as we read the text today? Today we're going to be in Ephesians chapter 2. And so if you, if, if you don't know where Ephesians is, if you've been in the book of Romans with us since January, turn to Romans because you're probably familiar with getting there. And then just go right a few pages, a couple chapters, and you'll find the book of Ephesians. We're going to be in Ephesians chapter 2 today. We're actually going to read some pretty popular verses Uh, Maybe some of you even memorized a few of these verses if you've been at church for a while. Um, And this is really kind of one of my favorite sections of Scripture here. And so one thing before we start, though, as you're still getting there, um, Paul is writing to believers. This is really, really important for us to understand this. These words that Paul wrote are to believers, and it's, it's really important that we know that, knowing what's going to happen here in just a second. So let me read this text with you. Ephesians 2, verses 1 through 9, and you were dead in your trespasses in sins in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. Man, he's starting off strong, starting off strong. Verse 3, among them too, we all formerly lived in the lust of our flesh, indulging the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And we're by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. Y'all, that's some bad news. Some bad news. But God, verse 4. Oh, that's true. But God, being rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, in our transgressions, made us alive. I'm sorry. Even when we were dead in our transgressions, he what? He made us alive together with Christ. For by grace you've been saved. And what did he do? He raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So that in the ages to come he might show the surpassing riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. Amen. And then here comes those verses probably many of you might have heard before. For by grace you've been saved through faith. And that, not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you so much. So I titled today's message, But God. Now, what's interesting about that title is, were any of you here last week? you remember what Pastor really talked about? He says, but now, right? He made a big point of that, those phrases, but now. 
What's interesting is he and I hadn't talked about what I was talking about, and I, hadn't, I didn't know what he was talking about. It's interesting a lot of times when you get a guest preacher to come in that God's doing the same thing, right? He's doing the same thing with, uh, with, with each person there. And so really today's just kind of a continuation of what Pastor talked about last week. And we see that phrase, but God, in verse 4. And that, y'all, is my favorite word in the whole Bible, but. In fact, I did a whole series in my prior church called The Big Butts of the Bible. And we just looked at all these butts that are pivotal. The gospel is pivotal on this word, but. And so we're going to look at it today. As we look at those verses together, we see verse 1 and 3 are really bad news, right? I mean, that's some bad news. And then comes verse 4. But God then gives us some really what? Good news, okay, good news. So he's delivering some bad news and some good news. Now I'm gonna ask you by a raise of hands, if someone comes to you and says, and people will say this quite a bit, they'll say, I've got some bad news and some good news, right? Have you ever heard that before? How many of you by a raise of hands want the bad news first? Raise your hand. Man, that's probably 70% of you. Okay, now how many of you want the good news first? There's like four of you. One, two, three, four, five. How many of you didn't raise your hands? Some of you, yeah. I told first service, that's me. I never, like if someone set, tells me to do something, my spirit of rebellion is, no, shut up. I'm not doing that. You know, like it's like in me. I don't know, like I've been talking to my kids about it. It's not like a spirit of rebellion. Someone up here, Joel's up here, like raise your hands. I'm like, shut up, Joel. Like, ah, nah. I'll do what I want. It's like that spirit that comes up in me. Sorry, it's just true, right? It's just true. Some of you know what I'm talking about because you didn't raise your hand, right? Some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. But listen, a lot of times people will come to you and say, I've got some bad news and some good news. A lot of you want the bad news first. I do too. I do too. Um, I want the bad news first because then I kind of get out of the way and then I can get to the good news. That's like my theory. Well, that's what Paul does here. He shares the bad news first and then he shares some good news after that. And listen, the bad news is bad. The bad news is really bad. But the good news is even better, y'all. It's even better. And so here's what I want to do this morning. I want for us to look at the bad news. And the bad news is there in verses 1 through 3. Now, you, you probably can't see in my Bible too well, but I have like highlighted on top of highlights, on top of highlights. Any of you write in your Bible or highlight in your Bible? Any of you doing that? Yeah, I do that a lot in this Bible especially. Like, I don't even know how you highlight a highlight, but I've been doing it. Um, And I highlighted some words here when I was studying. I'm just going to write some of those words up on the canvas here because I am a, um, what's it called? I'm a kinetic learner. Like, I need to do something. I'm also a visual learner. Any of you visual learners, can, like, you need to do it. So this is really, honestly, just for me. So if you can't read my handwriting, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. This is kind of chicken scratch. But I'm going to write some words down here. And if I miss any that you think need to go up on there, yell them out. Okay? We're going to talk about the bad news. And the bad news is this. And he says, and you were what? Dead. That's the first one, right? You were dead in your Well, that's a bad word. You were dead? That's bad news immediately, right? You were dead in your what? I'm going to write trespasses over here. Trespasses. If I spell it wrong, sorry. Like I said, notes are for me. You were dead in your trespasses and what? And sins. You were, man, you can't get much worse news than that. You were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. We're sons and daughters of disobedience. That's horrible. I'm going to write that down. Um, Sons and daughters, sorry, of what? Disobedience. B. I'm just going to disobey. Okay? We're sons and daughters of disobedience. Let's continue. Among them, too, we all formerly lived in the lusts of our flesh. That's horrible. Lusts of the flesh. 
Just continue to say, the lust of our flesh, indulge in the desires of the flesh and of the mind. So it's not just physical, but what's going on in your mind, right? And we're by nature, what's that phrase? Children of wrath. This is horrible, y'all. I'm a child of wrath. Now, this is some bad, bad news, okay? Even as the rest, it says, verse ending in verse three. And here's what I want to do this morning is I want to kind of look at some of these words here, starting with verse one. And you were dead, let's just highlight it, you were dead in your trespasses and sins. Any of you dead right now? Any of you? Nobody here, right? You're not dead. There's a few, there's a few definitions for this word. This word in the Greek that, that Paul would have shared is nekros, N-E-K-R-O-S. Say that with me. Nekros. Say it to your neighbor. Nekros. All right? This Greek word had a few definitions. You could be dead like, oh, dead, right? But Paul was writing to people that were reading these letters, he was, he's writing to physical, actual people that were alive. Some of them he knew very well. So he clearly is not meaning that definition. The other definition of necros is like incapacitation. Have any of you ever um, have your phone go all the way down to 0% and then it what? Bonk. It dies, right? Your phone dies and some of you are like, oh, my life, right? my life. That's kind of like what he's talking about here. In, it's got no ability to do anything anymore. Um, how many of you just finish up football two-a-day practices? Any of you just finish those up or remember those? And you come home and you are what? Oh, I'm dead, right? Or take your kids to Disneyland and you come home and you're like, oh, I'm dead, right? Or you work all day long, you plop down on the couch and you're like, Oh, I'm dead. Yeah, that's what Paul's talking about here. Or maybe even you've got a part of your body that doesn't work right. Like maybe you can't see out of your left eye or you can't hear out of your, you can't hear, you can't hear out of your ear, right? It's still there, but it's what? It's dead, it doesn't work. Or maybe your kidney doesn't work, so it's still there, but it doesn't work. It doesn't have any ability to do what it's supposed to do. This is the concept that Paul is sharing here. He's saying you were necros in your sin. You can't do anything about it, no matter how hard you try. You can't do anything about that sin. You're necros in it. Now there are many testimonies as I look out into the crowd. There are many testimonies here today where you know this to be true, absolutely. You tried for years and years and years and years to fix your sin problem on your own, didn't you? You tried to stop smoking or doing this or that or shopping on whatever. Like you, you tried for years and years and years to fix this sin problem, and you never could. Why? Because you're necros, you're dead in those transgressions and sin. That's where you were. No ability to do anything on your own about it. Now, why is this so important, this word? Why am I making such a big deal of it? I'm making such a big deal of it because I believe there's probably even some people here still today trying to fix your sin problem. You're trying to fix it on your own. And you know what? It's impossible. It's impossible to fix your sin problem on your own. You have no ability, you are necros to that sin. You can't do anything on your own about it. This is huge, this is huge for us. This is really, really, really bad news. You were dead in your trespasses and sins. Verse two, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but here we go, verse two. In which you formerly walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, of the spirit that is now working, in the sons of disobedience, I'll add daughters in there too, sons and daughters of disobedience. And that sounds like a biker gang or something, right? Yeah, it sounds horrible. 
Like, think, when I, when I read that the first time, I remember reading through that as we were studying, I was picturing, you know, people that follow the devil are like, you know, they got like horns sticking out of their head and they're in the forest, you know, like drinking goat's blood and blah, you know, doing whatever they're doing. And I'm just like picturing the weirdest stuff possible. The reality though, listen, the reality is this, you and me, y'all. We all, and Paul's including himself there, we all followed the devil. Followed sons and daughters of disobedience. This is horrible, horrible news. We all followed Satan and lived according to his plans, all of us. Now some of you, like, if you think about your life, some of you were crazy people in your BC days, smoking, drinking, shooting, snorting, doing all this stupid stuff, you know, crazy, crazy life. And some of you, kind of like my daughter over here, were like the sweetest church-going person and, you know, never flipped anyone off or ever did anything like that, right? Listen, 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 listen. Both absolutely lost in sin. Both absolutely lost in sin. Steal a little cookie from grandma's cookie jar, right? Tell a little white lie. Well, at least I'm not like that person. Someone I just heard, uh uh-oh. Absolutely, uh uh-oh. When you hear yourself start saying, at least I'm not like, man, you are on thin ice, y'all. Thin ice. Because the person who only stole a little cookie out of a grandma's cookie jar and the person over here doing who knows what, absolutely still lost in their sin. That's what the gospel says. We are all, we were all lost in our sin, dead to it. Everyone here has followed Satan in these ways. All sons or daughters of disobedience. Verse three, among them too, we all formerly lived in the lusts of our flesh. And what? It goes even further. Indulging the desires of the flesh and of the mind. So this is not just what we've done physically, but what we think about. What we think about in our thought life, in our minds. In fact, you know, I've been in ministry for many, many years, a couple of decades, and you'll talk to people, and you talk about, you know, whatever, the Ten Commandments or whatever, and I've never cheated on my wife, I never killed anybody, I never blah, 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 and and you know what Jesus says about all those things in Matthew chapter 5? He blows those things up, he elevates those things, he says, listen, you don't need to have just cheated on her, you look at a woman in lust and you've already committed adultery. Jesus elevates the law. He says, looking at your brother and saying, I hate you, that's like murdering him. We've all fallen short of the glory of God, every one of us, every single one of us. As it continues, and we're by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. Did I write that up here? Children of wrath. Oh, yeah, right there. That's really hard to read. Sorry about that. We're by nature children of wrath. It's natural, right? Pastor says this, he says, we're what, naughty by, you know, naughty by nature? He says that about us. Heard him say that a few times. I love it. We were born into our sin, absolutely born into it as a child of wrath. See, uh, that sin came from Adam and Eve, generation down to generation down to generation down to generation. You're a child of of wrath because your great, 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 great granddaddy was and his great, great, great granddaddy was and his great, 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 you know, all the way to Adam and Eve. That sin's passed down through the bloodline to you and me today. We're all born children of wrath. It's absolutely natural. Now, that natural sin is clearly seen in little kids. Now, I've got almost adult kids, right? But how many of you have little kids at home, like little ones, little ones, right? Some of you do and some of you did. Do you have to teach them to sin? Do you have to teach them to like throw the cereal on the floor, right? Or throw a fit or like, we, like hopefully, you know, someone brings you your dinner and you don't like it, you're like, bam, I hate that, right? They didn't learn that from you. If they did, you need counseling, okay? You need some counseling. And we've got counselors here that can help you. Like where did they learn that? 
Where did they learn when someone takes their toy to go over there? Mine! Like, you probably don't do that at home. If I were to come over and, you know, grab a water, like, they didn't learn that from you. They were born that way. It's natural. We all are because of our great, 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 great granddaddy's sin. It's been happening since the Garden of Eden. Now, the bad news is, is really bad, right? It's really, really bad. And then comes my favorite three-letter word in the entire Bible. What is it? But, yeah, I'm gonna write it up here. But, hopefully, write it a little bigger. But who? Not just us, but God, right? Hopefully you can see that. Like I said, these notes are kind of just for me. But God. So the bad news is really, really bad. But God, in verse four. In verse four, it comes full tilt around. But God. You see, in the Bible, this word but is absolutely pivotal. It's pivotal to the whole Bible. It's pivotal to the gospel. And the the whole gospel pivots on this thing. Yes, we were dead in our sins and trespasses, pursued the lust of our flesh. We were sons and daughters of disobedience. We were children of wrath. But God, verse four, being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, That even when we were dead in our trespasses and sins, even when that's true, what did he do? What did he do? He made us alive together. He made us alive together with Christ, for by grace you've been saved. Verse six, and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus so that in the ages to come he might show the surpassing riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. And then here comes that verse that a lot of you maybe know. For by grace you've been saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. Y'all, this is the good news. This is absolutely the good news. It destroys the bad news. And the bad news is a reality. But this good news is such a bigger reality for us. If I were to like paraphrase all of the good news here that we just read, it would say, but God, who loves us, even when we were dead, what did he do? He made us alive, he raised us up, he seated us with him, and he saved us by his grace, amen? Now looking at that verse eight and nine, I want you just to look at that in your Bible and I want you to think about for just a second, who does the saving? Think about that for a second. Look at that verse there, verse eight and nine. Who does the saving? Who does the saving work? It's God's love and mercy and grace that is given to us as a free gift when we were dead in our trespasses and sins, y'all. It's absolutely God that does the saving. And for those of you that would say, yeah, but I had to believe and I had to walk up forward and I had to say a prayer and I had to accept, I had to do all of those. Look at what it says there. For by grace you've been saved through faith and that not of yourselves, not even that is of yourself. It's the gift of God, not a result of worse, so that no one may boast. We've been saved by grace through what? What's the word there? Faith. Whose faith? Think about this for a second. Whose faith? Did we muster up enough faith to believe in Jesus? Y'all, according to this text, even the faith to believe in Jesus is a free gift of grace from him. Even the faith to believe is a gift of grace from the Father above. This is crazy. This is absolutely nuts. And you know why? You know why it's got nothing to do with us? So that what? Those last few words there. 
so that no one can what? It's got nothing to do with you. You had no ability to do anything about it on your own. It's only because of what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for you. He has the power to save. We do not, right? We do not. Why? So that way we can't boast. So that way we can't boast about it. Listen, if salvation were about the things we could do, then we'd be in heaven over here saying like, oh yeah, well look at me, I built an orphanage and I did this and I read 25 apps on my Bible program and I did this and I went to CTC and I, I did a bunch of stuff and I, and, you know, blah, blah, me, 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 I, 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 the me monster's coming out and all the while we're in heaven, we're saying me, 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 listen, Trust me when I say this, that when you get to heaven, there isn't going to be any I, 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 me, 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 right? It's not that. It's you, you, you. You are glorious, God. You are Lord, God. You are gracious, God. You are love, God. You are merciful, God. You are the one. I am not. It's all about you, God. You get the glory. You, you, you. Heaven is all about you, God. You, God, you, God. Not me, That's why this verse says it's not about us. It's got nothing to do with us, so we cannot boast. It's all about what he's done for us. All about what he's done for us. He is the saver. He is the provider of salvation for us. Our salvation is not based on our works, our goodness, or anything we have done. Our salvation is only based on his gift of grace and mercy. And for that, we ought to be grateful. For that, we ought to give our lives in obedience to him. For that, we ought to shout his praise from the mountaintops because he saved us by his grace. That's the good news. It all pivots on this word, but. Let me do a few things here as we start to wrap up. There are some really bad going on here. And it says, but God. I'm going to continue to read through these verses. But God, being what? Being rich in mercy. Right? What did he do? It says, being rich in mercy because of his, what is it? What's it say? Great love. Right? Because of his great love with which He loved us, that even when we were dead in our transgressions, he what? What did he do? He made us alive, right? Made us alive. What did he do? What else did he do? He made us alive together with Christ, for by grace you've been saved, and he what? What did he do? He raised us up, right? He raised us up, and he seated us with him, right? He seated us with him. He, uh, he seated us with him in order that in the ages to come he might show the surpassing, what does it say? Riches of his grace, right? The riches of his grace and kindness towards us for by, what's the word there? For by grace you've been saved. Through what? Through what? It says through faith, right? Through faith. And this not of ourselves, but it is the gift of of God to those who believe in Christ Jesus. Listen. That word, but, is absolutely pivotal to the gospel. It's absolutely pivotal. The good news is that because of the grace of God towards us, we are offered the gift of salvation. We are absolutely offered the forgiveness of our sins paid for by what? The blood of Christ. Paid for by the blood of Christ for you and for me. It's because of the blood of Christ that the bad news that was horrible, listen, is thrown away. It's absolutely thrown away. And the bad news, although it's a reality, listen, you can be made clean again, right? You can be made clean clean again through the power of the gospel. My question to you is have you been made clean? I pray that you have. And you know what? You cannot make yourself clean. 
it is impossible for you to make your sins clean. The only person that can clean you of your sins is Jesus Christ because of his shed blood on our behalf. Have you been made clean? I pray that you have. I absolutely pray that you have. Have you been forgiven of your sins? Listen, if not, today's the day. Right, like what have you been waiting for? Today is absolutely the day to get right with our Lord and Savior. Maybe some of you have been running and gunning for a long time and you just keep saying, yeah, someday, oh, someday. Today's the day, y'all. Today's the day for you to get right with the Lord. Maybe some of you, you know what it means to be saved. You've asked Jesus to forgive you, you've done all that, and you know what? You've been on the run for a few years. COVID did a really weird thing in your heart and your life, and you're just like, I don't even know, and I'm all messed up. You know what? Today's the comeback. Today's the day to come back to him. Today's the day to remember, remember the shed blood on your behalf. Let's not take his sacrifice for granted, y'all. Let's not take his sacrifice for granted. Let's use that sacrifice to, to push us forward in our faith, to serve others, to worship him. I pray that you know what it means to be made clean. And listen, there may be some of you that don't believe like any of this. You know, it's okay. Your disbelief of something doesn't make it untrue though. Like seriously, you, there was a dude, you, if I tell you there was a dude that ate an airplane, you'd be like, huh, what? Dude literally ate an airplane back in 1978. He ate like a bunch of shopping carts and a motorcycle and some bicycle. He ate those things. How? I have no idea, but it happened. It's just proof. You don't have to believe it to be true. There was a day I was ripped. You don't have to believe that, but it's true. Like that one's hard to believe. I have the picture on my, on my uh, fridge to keep me out of there and it doesn't work, right? I was at one time. Like, you don't have to believe it, but it is true. Listen, the gospel is true, y'all. It's absolutely true. You can trust it. You can give control of your life over to Jesus today. Even if you've never believed it before, just say a simple prayer to God right now. Say, God, give me the faith to believe. There's no special handshake. There's no, you know, no special words you have to say or anything like that. You just say, God, I'm a sinner and I need you. I need you to change me. I need you to fix me. I need you to forgive my sin and make me new. Make me a new creation, God. You have that kind of conversation with him and he sends his Holy Spirit into you, cleans you up of all this and he makes you new again. That's my prayer for you. Why don't you pray for me and the, the prayer team's gonna come forward as well, as we wrap things up, God, I pray for those that are here today that, that, that have, have not given their hearts to you yet. And I say yet, because there are probably some people here that keep saying not yet. Well, today, God, today's the day for them, I pray. I pray that they would give their hearts to you, that somehow through the message today, not because of anything I said or anything, but that you spoke directly to their hearts and they want to give their lives to you today. I pray for them right now in this moment that they would have the courage to just say those words. Lord, save me. Fix my sin problem. I wanna live for you. And God, I also pray for those that are maybe, maybe they're saved, but they've been on the run for a while. I pray, God, that you draw them near to you today and that today's a new day for them and you. Thank you, Father, for the gospel, for the gospel that shreds any bad news and, and brings into our life the true good news, that you saved us. Father, I pray for those that are here today. I pray that they would come forward, make a decision to follow you, I pray all of these things in Jesus' name, amen. 
Listen, there's some people here at the front, a prayer team who will pray with you. Maybe you're someone who said, I, I, I've, I've never given my heart to Christ, but I want to today. They'll help you walk through that. There's others of you here that maybe you said, man, I, I need someone to just pray with me, help figure out where I'm at. They'll pray, for, they'll pray with you for that as well. Just come forward. Let's do some work here. Let's do some work here today. God's done a great work in us. Let's do some work here this morning. Thank you so much. to follow Jesus, would like to get water baptized, join a city life group or one of our serve teams, we would love to connect with you to help you do that. So on your way out, please stop at our connect tables and one of our serve team members is there eager to help you get connected. And if you're online, just click that digital connect card and fill it out and we can help you do any of those things. We just want to tell you all, thank you so much for joining us for worship today. We hope you have a blessed week, and we'll see you next Sunday.